you're like me and enjoy playing crane games, but don't like wasting copious amounts of money on read games at stale arcades for a slim chance at winning prizes that'll be thrown in the trash a week later, then you'll probably like this game. Now I won't make any bold claims like, this game will change your life, or it'll be the last game you'll ever play. It's not the Dark Souls of Crane games, or anything like that. It's just a crane game. Just a crane game about collecting toys and prizes, and filling your world with your collections. But even something simple like just a crane game needs to be created to be played, and the creation of this crane game starts with a plane in an empty world. The plane was looking a little plain, so on goes a new material. I made a script to handle the movement of the claw, then got to work on the makeshift claw that I'd be moving around. The camera was a little too far and a bit too down low for my liking, so I positioned it in a way that looked a bit better. Don't get too attached to the camera, it'll change multiple times throughout the video. Like Apollo back in the day, I moved the sun to be directly above the world to give a more accurate portrayal of the center position of the claw. I bet Apollo would have really benefited from having Unity, then all he'd have to do was change a simple rotation value instead of hauling a giant sun chariot across the sky. Ancient gods aside, I added the individual claws of the crane to the claw movement script to prepare for them opening and closing later down the line, then it was time to actually work on inputs. I figured it'd be easier to set up the controller inputs first, and do the keyboard inputs down the line when they need to be set up, since the controller's joystick input is most similar to an arcade joystick. The random numbers you see are me moving the left joystick on my controller, which means the inputs are working. Next was actually making the crane move relative to the inputs. And after slowing it down a bit, we've got to start. At first I wanted to use fake physics for the rotation of the claw when it moved, by using maths to rotate the crane in the opposite direction of its direction of travel. Now it might be hard for the untrained eye to see, but there's actually something wrong in the scene you're watching. Leave a comment if you're an eagle eye and able to spot the error. A few fixes later for issues that involved the wrong rotations and slow turning, I had something that actually looked kind of satisfying. Next I made a game manager script to handle my game states. Movement was disabled when not in the moving state, and I began working on the opening of the claws for when the crane drops. Only one of them worked to begin with, the other two claws were a touch shy, or they wanted to stick with their friend, but after a bit of encouragement, they were opening correctly. Closing the claws worked the same way, so that was easy to do. Surprisingly, the dropping of the crane actually worked the first time. All I had to do was slow down the drop speed and it was fine. The crane raising up worked, but the crane was raising before the claws could properly close. All it took was a delay being added before the crane raised and the issue was fixed. One box move, a new floor, and a few camera adjustments later, and I had the area for the machine, as well as the mechanic of the crane returning back to the box when it had raised. After fixing some persistent claw jamming issues, and a problem where the crane drifted, everything was back on track. I restricted the movement to the bounds of the machine, and this was the point where I experimented with a different movement style, where the crane could only move along one axis at once, and move at the same speed, regardless of the joystick input. Spoiler alert for the rest of the video, future me changes it back as it feels a lot less satisfying than having more control over the crane. Now that the crane was working, it was time to tackle the toy interaction. I made a makeshift toy to go with my makeshift claws, added a rigid body, and tried picking it up hoping it would work on the first go and I could wrap it up. And yeah, if you consider knocking over the toy and rising to space as working, then it did. Even though it was clearly working perfectly, I decided to truck on anyways, fixing the lift off issue, increasing the size of the toy, and attempting another pickup. It was starting to become clear to me that the way I'd made things work with the crane up to this point wasn't going to mesh well with picking things up, but my own stubbornness meant I'd continue trying to polish this turd. And polish I did, Remaking the claws into thinner ones with a proper curve, since I thought the main problem was the toy slipping out. The thinner claws were more promising, even if only slightly, and I thought I had a breakthrough when I added a notch to the toy and the crane actually lifted it off the ground. I tried all sorts of solutions, but with none working I decided to keep working on the project and leave the pickups as a future problem. I'd eventually get rid of it, but at the time I figured it'd be a good mechanic to stop the crane from dropping when it was right above a toy, so that's what you're seeing. I changed the crane returning to be more like an actual crane game, and although it's extremely subtle, made it rotate when hitting another toy. I couldn't stay away from the pickups for long, and I eventually found what seemed to be a solution, but it came with a whole lot of issues of its own. The more solutions I tried out, the more problems that popped up. So for the second time this video, I left it to the future. I decided from the start that I wanted to use a dynamic camera, if not for the crane machine itself, at least for the toy collection. And since I've used Cinemachine in the past, I installed it and tested out a few different cameras before settling on a free look camera. I got the movement for the camera working using the right joystick and restricted it to the bounds of the machine. I set my eyes on a more physics-based rope-like solution for my pickup problem 
and downloaded a claw machine project from GitHub by C. Zazuaga. Though since it was in another language and severely broken due to updating to another version of Unity, it acted more as inspiration than a solution. Back to my own project, I attempted to pick up using a simple sphere and it finally worked, so I stuck to the sphere as the toy shape. I shaped everything out a bit more, and added more spheres of different colours and sizes. Now that my machine resembled the Dashcon ball pit, I hopped into Blender and followed this tutorial by GMG Studio to make a physics based rope, but like an idiot, I used a cube instead of a cylinder and got some funky results. After returning to Blender and remaking the rope with a cylinder this time, I got the rope working. Since the movement was going to be more indirect than my current crane, by moving the sphere that the claw and rope are attached to instead of the claw itself, I created a new script and got the movement working. I didn't like how the rope was moving, so I changed the hinge joints I was using to configurable joints, and even though I had no idea, and still have no idea, how joints work, I still got the strangest feeling that something wasn't quite right. Sticking with configurable joints for some reason, I reduced the size of the rope, because if the rope's harder to see, it'll be harder to notice that it looks terrible. I restricted the movement to the bounds of the machine once again, and restricted movement over the drop off zone this time as well. It was time to replace the configurable joints, which I did with double hinge joints. Here's the claws interacting with the spheres, and here's a comparison between the configurable rope and the double hinge rope. To me the difference in look and feel is night and day. With an adequate rope, it was time to redo the game loop. I implemented the dropping of the crane and the opening of the claws, the closing of the claws, and the raising, <coughs> I said the raising of the crane, the claw return, and the opening of the claws over the drop zone. The crane was moved to its idle position, and the drop zone was adjusted to size. At the press of a button, the crane would now move to the toy area and the game would start, and just like that, the game now had a proper loop. At times, the crane would make a noticeable jerk towards the starting position, instead of moving to it like normal, only happening when the start game button on the controller was pressed too many times. Here's a comparison of the movements, with the intended one on the left, and the jerk on the right. I'd later realise there was an issue with the way I was handling the co-routines, but since I was stumped in the moment, I pivoted back to that trusty something I had control over, the camera. The high angle zoomed in look left much to be desired, namely actually being able to see the crane. Medium angle was better, but not by much. Zooming out didn't help, and the orthographic view looked weird, so I returned it to a lower angle zoomed in camera, albeit slightly higher angle than I originally had. Although the spheres worked a hell of a lot better than my makeshift toys at being picked up, there were times when the collides would just glitch into each other, which messed up both the claw and toy. It's a problem that will persist throughout the whole video, and even still persists, so if anyone has any solutions, please let me know. Like I mentioned before, my implementation of coroutines was subpar, so I decided to change all of my coroutines to functions. Since I've been through the game loop twice already, I'll speed through it. Drop the crane, grab the toy, return to the drop zone, dropped off the toy, and started the game. Now that the toys were simple spheres, I wanted to show inside the toy so the player would know what they're going for. With the foundation of the toy sorted, since I'm not planning on manually placing each toy in every player's scene, I got working on the script to spawn toys. First game 20 in the same position, then 5 in different positions, 10 in set positions, 5 1 by 1 slow, 10 1 by 1 fast, 10 at random positions, spawned 50, then had some fun with it and spawned 100. As for the toys themselves, I recreated the toy capsules using a base I made in Blender and a model I'd previously made and textured until I had something that looked alright. I imported more placeholder models, fit them to the capsule size, and made a scriptable object for each model. I hit the play button, and lo and behold, each capsule contained a random model. Three different placeholder materials were created for the base of the capsule, Sandy Desert, Lush Jungle, and Bright Under Sea, and now the capsules changed colour depending on the theme of the toy it contained. After updating the look of the machine again, I got working on what would actually happen when the player collects a toy. To test if the script was working, I set the zone to destroy the toy when it hits the green area. I upped the spawn rate of the toys, and changed the script from destroying the toy to just collecting its information. A cube toy capsule was created to be spawned alongside the spherical ones, but I eventually removed the cubes after not liking the way the pickups were working, or not working I should say. It was time for a proper claw, one that was actually modelled, so off I went to Blender. Using a sphere to shape the curve of the claw, and thinning it out near the bottom, I made the claw, imported it to Unity, and replaced the one I had. I'd planned on using a mesh collider on the model, hoping that it somehow fixed my consistent collider issues, 
was quickly informed by the buzzkill window that mesh colliders couldn't be used on a non-kinematic rigid body, so back to box colliders I went, using the new model as the base. The new claws didn't actually open wide enough to collect the toy, but after a quick adjustment, they were picking up the spherical toys. The cubes were a different story, so I said bye to the cubes. I checked the data of the collected toys to make sure it matched the toy that was displayed, and made the sporting a whole lot more satisfying, going from this, to this. There was a trend of toys falling out through the gap in the crane, which despite technically being fair, was still frustrating. Giving the crane an extra claw to make 4 total work like a charm. Lastly, I randomised the scale and rotation of the toy models inside the capsules, which was a subtle way of making things seem less samey. And that's where I finished up for this devlog, with the next steps being, adding functionality to actually collect the toys and store them somewhere, replacing all placeholder models with actual models, different machines, some which are based on existing machines and some that I think would be fun, and lastly for now, an in-game currency that's used to play said machines. If you have any suggestions for features to implement or improvements that can be made, especially if those improvements are how to pick up the capsules without glitching out the crane, leave them in the comments. And if you want to see more from just a crane game, feel free to subscribe. And if you want a bit of local multiplayer fun, check out my game Battle Snakes on Steam. It's a 2-4 player snake arcade game and it's currently on sale for 50% off. Heads up though, it can only be played on the same keyboard, so you'll need to be in the same room or use Steam Remote Play to play with a friend elsewhere. Thanks for watching.